Hey, what's up guys? This is Dom from MacMixing.com and today I'm going to go over Pro Tools 101. Um, a lot of people have been asking me, you know, should I get Pro Tools? Should I get Cubase? Should I get Logic? It really doesn't matter. Honestly, it's about what you're comfortable with. I'm not getting paid by Avid, so I'm not going to hype their program a whole lot. But I am a Pro Tools fan and I am a Mac fanatic. I would suggest to do what's comfortable for yourself. But here we have Pro Tools and this is Pro Tools 101 so I'm just going to teach you guys some of the basics on getting set up and starting recording. As you can see up here on the screen I have an auxiliary track pulled up uh, that's actually where my mic is coming through so I can route it back through my computer so I can route it through the screen capture and just have a little setup here like that doing that. So this is our auxiliary track right here. I pulled that up but what I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, just show you guys the basic and some basic key commands and uh, get you up and running. So we're going to go up to track here and add a new track. You would do exactly what you think you would do. You go ahead and click new or you can press shift Apple N, which will also bring up this new track window. So we're going to go ahead and create a new mono audio track. Now that's only because we are running mono into Pro Tools with the mic that I'm talking through right now. If you had stereo mics wired in, then that's cool. You could choose a stereo track, but I'm almost guessing that you don't since we're watching Pro Tools 101 right now. So Go ahead and create the track that's going to pull up this new audio track right here and then we're going to have to go over to our mix window. And the mix window here is basically how you're going to route your tracks uh, and get them so that you have the right mic coming through the right track. So I'm going to go ahead and route this track here. See now I will actually be coming through two tracks. So here we go, I just got a little bit louder. I'm going to go ahead and mute the auxiliary track. So now I'm coming through the audio track. And from here, I can actually go ahead and record my voice if I want. So, test. This is Dom from MacMixing.com. This is a test in Pro Tools 101. So, there. I just recorded my voice. and Zoom in on that for you guys. So, we have this track right here. I just recorded this. This is Dom from MacMixing.com. This is a test in Pro Tools 101. So, there you go. As simple as that. Uh, just to get up and running and recording. It's pretty easy actually. If you ever want to delete something, you can just click and drag, select, and then you can hit your backspace key or you can hit the delete key on the keyboard. A lot of other common functionalities in recording DAWs are spacebar for play and stop. This is Dom from MacMixing.com, so you can use your spacebar to stop and play. Uh, number keys like zero will do play for you. This is Dom. We have back with one, we have forward with two, and we also have record with three. This is Dom from MacMixing.com. So you can just press 3 to record and 0 to stop. It actually gets really convenient. Um, unless, of course, like me in front of me, I have a board here. So I do have my record, play, and stop buttons on there. But I do use a keyboard a lot as well. I can just press 3 here and automatically start recording instead of having you know, to arm the recording button and then hit play and then go through all that. You know, And some of you guys might not be familiar with that anyway, so it doesn't matter. There we go. I just recorded all that here, and uh, it's, I mean, it's very simple to record. Uh, basically, what, what you can also do here is we have a bunch of inserts that we can use. Um, when you first install Pro Tools, you don't have nearly this many. I've bought in a lot of other plugin packs in the past, so I do have quite a bit of plugins now. But one of the plugins that comes with Pro Tools that I really, really like, and honestly, it's not too bad, is the Dverb plugin. And I'm going to go ahead and put that on there. I do have... Uh, latency monitoring turned on. A lot of you uh, may not know what that is, but what that's doing is that's actually stopping there from being a delay between my mic and what I'm hearing. If I put that on a little bit, now you can hear the reverb. See, I can see monitoring. That actually bypasses any plugins that are on your tracks, any inserts. It'll bypass them uh, if you have that on. But with it off, I can go ahead and turn up the reverb. Ooh, oh, I'm in a hallway. All right, so <laughs> you guys get the idea here. So that's a good way to get up and running, uh, to start recording some stuff. Uh, what you can actually do, a lot of you, if you do hip hop or whatever, uh, you can go ahead and import your track. I'm gonna go ahead and import an audio track for you. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and pull up a beat here. Let's see. All right, so I'm just going and if you just double click on it, it'll put it there and there so it can convert it and we'll click done and it's going to ask you where you want to save it at and it's by default going to want to put it in your audio folder of which your session is located so we're just going to go ahead and click open 
and ask us if we want to put it on a new track or in the region list. If we put it on a new track, it's obviously it's going to put it down here on a new track. If I put it in the region list, it's going to put it over here on the sidebar right here. And from there, you can drag it onto a set of new tracks or one new stereo track. But I'm just going to go ahead and click new track and have it at session start. And I'm going to click OK there. So now we have the track pulled up. And you guys will be able to hear what it sounds like. So it's pretty easy to get going. Um, I created a new track and I imported a beat and I am set up to record. I could literally just go start recording over this song right now. And all that maybe would take about three minutes to set up. So Pro Tools is not that difficult to learn. I mean, obviously advanced Pro Tools is, but once you get comfortable with some of this basic stuff, go ahead and watch some of my other video tutorials and uh, I'll teach you a little more about Pro Tools like the video and I hope this taught you a little bit about beginning with Pro Tools. Like I said, do whatever you're comfortable with. If you've seen Sonar or Cubase or Logic before and you feel a little more comfortable with that, go with one of those. It's not a big deal. They're all the same. They all do great things and they all have their own good qualities about each one. So go ahead and check them out and I hope this was helpful. Thanks again. This is Dom from MacMixing.com.